So we know that Eren Jaeger and the Attack Titan staple together really well. They are the core construct of the story. But what if Eren never got the Attack Titan? What if, for some odd reason, the story was structured completely differently? Eren, at least up to this point, never had any Titans to begin with. Never gained any Titans. But in return was a more fruitful fighter, maybe similar to Levi. You know, a very good soldier, a very good swordsman. A completely different person to what he is today. I think there's a couple of things that change changes this narrative. Obviously, the Attack Titan and the Titans in general regarding the Shifters are extremely important, and those Titan-shifting characters play very vital pieces to the entirety of the story. They're kind of like the nine pillars that fragment and construct the whole narrative, and we unravel it piece by piece with the introduction of the said Titan-shifters. With Eren having the Attack Titan, he was our primary focus. He was the segue to the idea that for some odd reason, the Titan ability could be transferred to a human. And the interest surrounding that, coupled with the knowledge of what is in the basement and the concept luring us to that point, the mystery surrounding it, built a very big and lingering idea. When you take away that completely, for me, I'm thinking you'd have to replace it with something else. Now, you could easily give the Attack Titan to Armin or Mikasa or Levi or Erwin or basically any character other than Eren and kind of have a similar result. Instead, it would just kind of be from the perspective of Eren, who doesn't have the power he adequately wants or needs to be able to avenge his mother and to kind of live up to that goal of destroying all Titans. So instead, he would most likely push forward forward into excelling in swordsmanship, and I think he would kind of thrive in that aspect. And he would probably get to a point in the story where he rivals Levi, which, when you think about it, would be a pretty interesting concept. However, we're not going to make it that simple. Instead, we're going to use Grisha, the original Attack Titan, before he transferred it over to Eren. And how this is going to work is we're going to use the idea that Grisha was actually still alive. Instead, he plays more of a ominous figure, a hooded villain or a hooded persona that no one really knows about, someone that kind of just goes throughout the story that is a massive mystery. We're still playing off Eren's perspective, but the Attack Titan is more so located within a mysterious boundary and only comes in when it's kind of drastically needed. Now, obviously, there's a couple of different ways that you could go about this, which would allow uh, the author to kind of keep this hooded individual, or Grisha, uh, actually a mystery. You could go off and say that Grisha was killed alongside his mother in that first altercation right at the beginning of the story. That kind of kick-started the drive for Aaron Yeager now. I think a lot of people would still be skeptical because you'd see the mother dying, but not specifically his father's. And then people would ultimately reroute that back to Grisha in some way, shape, or form. But I think it would lead people for quite a bit of time time. Uh, obviously, the more encounters we have with Grisha, and most likely when the Armored Titan and the Female Titan and uh, the Colossal Titan kind of start rocking up and causing havoc, Grisha would be the hooded individual that rocks up to the scene and transform. It'd be from the perspective of Eren, so you'd never really see the hooded individual kind of come into the picture. You'd probably just see something fly over from the distance out of nowhere and transform into the Attack Titan, and that's that. Disappearing after the fight's done and even getting lost in the crowd. It adds this really interesting element of suspense. Not only do you question who that individual is and why they have the Attack Titan and how they can even transform, but you also question why are they fighting each other? Why is this Titan fighting with those Titans specifically? And it helps you kind of build that idea actually rather early on. Obviously, you can't replace the scenes uh, that Eren has with Grisha, but I think it helps kind of build that early mystery with a lot of different things. And a lot of people would be very confused and obviously asking a whole bunch of different questions, trying to get some answers as best they can. When you start to go through the story, however, this formula starts to fumble, it starts to crack, especially when you start to learn about the Titans specifically, and how they work, what the whole point of the Titans are, and how they're pretty fundamentally important to everything that's going on. The only way that I could feel like that beginning bit would work, evidently if Grisha were to come back to Eren and kind of reveal himself, maybe in a fight with the armored Titan uh, and defending him and maybe he gets severely injured for once, or maybe this hooded figure just 
just walks up to Aaron at some point and like, hey, like, obviously I'm your father. I need you to take a solid for me. I need you to do something for me that's going to be very life-changing. However, there's two things that kind of happens if this was the case. After we kind of get through the first portion of the story and we start learning more about the Titans, if we were to kind of just thrust Aaron into the story as a Titan shifter at that point, he's very underdeveloped, especially as a Titan shifter. So it would take a lot longer to develop him as a character that puts him on par with the Armored Titan, the Colossal Titan, the Female Titan, etc, etc. However, on the other hand of that, you also get this jarring kind of personality shift, which I think would be rather interesting. Aaron being thrown into a world that gives him the power that he kind of desires, but he doesn't really know how to use it. So he's a little bit out of control at this point. He's a little bit all over the place. On top of that, however, you also have the idea that he finds out his father is truly alive, but then he has to kill his father to obviously take the Titan ability, because obviously he's running out of time, and all that knowledge and all that kind of desire is passed down onto Aaron. It's a very jarring moment, mentally, physically, emotionally, and I think that would change his character, at least in this perspective, in a really good way, in a very interesting way. Not only does it kind of warp him as a Titan shifter, but it also warps his mentality, how he's meant to feel about everything. These flood of emotions, uh, especially coming back from Grisha's perspective this entire time, kind of watching over the city, being that hooded individual like Batman, and kind of being the savior that he was, all comes flooding back and affects Eren rather heavily. It makes him question his father. Why didn't he come back? What was he trying to hide? What's in the basement? What is the true meaning of Titans? Why now of all times? And it kind of throws him for a loop. It puts him in this phase of limbo, like not really sure what to do. Should I continue being a Titan shifter? Do I deserve to be one? Do I want to destroy all the Titans? Do I want to do this? Do I want to do that? I think the Grisha idea is a pretty cool way to go about it. Obviously, a lot of the story would have to be changed, and that's an obvious thing. But it's also a different perspective. You know, you're looking from Eren's perspective, who is seeing another person using the attack Titan, which is ultimately his father, this hooded, mysterious person. And then Eren obviously put into the world as a soldier and trains up and becomes really skillful as a soldier, which I think would also be a very interesting take. Not only do we getting this, you know, weird progression with this hooded individual and these titans attacking, but seeing Eren kind of progress through the ranks and getting really good with becoming a swordsman and with the maneuver gear and just moving up ranks and becoming more respected. With everything that we've seen throughout the story, I think a lot of people would enjoy that. It's obviously not the same effect, obviously. It's not as dramatic as Eren turning into a titan shifter or learning how to use his abilities more and more. However, in return, it does make the world feel a lot more dangerous as us as readers are kind of stuck with Eren's perspective and we're seeing the world as an extremely dangerous thing. We don't have that power to back it up. We don't have that comfort of a titan shifting ability. You know, we're just a human with swords and maneuver gear that allow us to kill titans if we're good enough. Seeing a hooded individual kind of come in out of nowhere and obliterate multiple different titans and save us multiple different times would give this inspiration, this spark to Eren and a lot of other characters I assume as well. Maybe they'd even fear that character. Maybe the soldiers and the actual government within Paradise would be like, who is this hooded individual? We don't know who this is. We need to hunt them down and kill them. If you think about that and we explore that idea, like imagine if Eren had to kill his own father like that. And then in return, Eren ultimately awakens the Titan ability. I'm just thinking about that right now is actually a really cool way to go about it. Him killing his father and he's like, wait, you need to inject this into yourself and eat me right now. All right, this is a, a really weird situation. I know you think I was dead and now you found me and I'm alive and now you've just brutally like injured me, but I need you to, to inject this in yourself. Regardless of any fact, Eren will most likely still get the attack Titan because that's kind of how the process of the story leads up to at least in the most recent stuff. If you were to try and maneuver around it, it'd be very weird at the moment. So instead, if we lead up to the point of Eren evidently getting the attack Titan right at the end, it's always going to be jarring, but it would have some very interesting repercussions. Like I said, the mentality shift and warp, the emotion warp, the physical warp, and just how everything kind of crumbles around him. Everything he once knew was kind of a lie, and he's thrown into this world that he knows nothing really about, with all these memories coming from Grisha and the person before, which is Kruger, and ultimately reforming him in such a way that probably wouldn't sit well. When I think about that, when I think about Aaron not having the attack Titan, and someone else specifically having it, it leads to a very interesting idea for what the story potentially could have been. You know, what if Eren never had the attack titan? Obviously, so many things would change. And
and leading into the finale of the story, a lot of it would be very effective for Eren's character. You could really play him off as being a very malicious character, a very evil one, and play on the idea that the warping of the Titan users and the memories that they kind of gain from the previous users is a fundamentally horrible process. Basically blow up your character out of proportion into this monstrous killer uh, because of this. And then you add in all of the political war with Marley and LDR and, and how that kind of comes to fruition. And then you have this broken character that has all of this power and is learning to use all of this power too. And then you also have this political war that is getting really crazy really quickly. Then I guess you could wrap in Zeke trying to control Eren or trying to talk to Eren. And then that ultimately not going all too well because of everything that's happened with Eren. I think there's a lot of different things that could be done. Obviously, this isn't the only way you could rewrite or, you know, consider a what if scenario. But for me, I think the idea of Grisha being having the attack titan throughout the entirety of the story and using him as a hooded villain would be a pretty interesting concept. I think there'd be a lot of avenues to explore and a lot of different options that Isayama, I think, would bring to life very beautifully. So with that being said, that is basically it. Let me know how you guys feel about this what if scenario. But also let me know your own what if scenario for Eren potentially not having the attack titan. How would you like to see the story kind of go down if that was the case? But I'm actually going to end the video off here. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.